Hello booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate and it feels like it's been like 78 years since I filmed a video like a normal video like my last couple of videos have been vlogs and then there was like my 100th video thingy and then there was like a live show so it's been a minute since I've like just done a filmy video thing. I feel like I almost don't remember how to do this. That's not true. I do remember. Let's do it. So today I'm going to be doing a graphic novel slash comic book haul. And this is pretty much going to cover anything that I bought with panels for this year. It's about half of the year's worth, so it's, it's kind of a big stack. I will say some of these were bought by my husband, some of these were bought by me, some of these were things that we both wanted. First we have Deadpool Illustrated. This is Deadpool, but he is in several like literary classics. Um, as you can see, Moby Dick here. I'm guessing this is like Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn, one of those. Um, but he's just he's just moving throughout some literary classics and making everything ridiculous. And this one is by Cullen Bunn and Matteo Lolly. Next we have Marvel Eternals by Neil Gaiman. It is illustrated by John Romita Jr. So I believe this is the one where the Eternals are um, a like branch off of the same process that created sentient life on Earth. I, f I think this is the correct one. So one thing I find that's very interesting about this is that I don't believe that the Eternals, those in that sort of race, know what they are. And so whoever the main person is, is going around and telling them what they are and they have to kind of come to terms with that. Are they going to be in denial? Are they going to accept it? Are they going to reject it? And I find that sort of story very interesting. And plus, I love anything by Neil Gaiman. So I'm a sucker for Neil Gaiman. Then we have Marvel Civil War. This is by Miller, McNiven, Vines, and Hollowell. Um, in this storyline, a lot of people know about it because of the movies, but of course things are different in the comics. But um, in this, the Avengers basically split into two sides. Some of them are behind Iron Man, some of them are behind Captain America, and they're sort of battling over what they believe is right. And this all revolves around the Superhero Registration Act. So basically, um, if they're going to make people register if they have superpowers, giving the government more control over those with abilities. Next we have Avengers Disassembled. All I know about this particular storyline is that uh, there's someone that had been lost on the team. I don't know if they died or they went missing. Um, and then they return and it kind of shocks everyone and they're trying to figure out like what's going on. Something happens and Wanda Maximoff, something happens and then Wanda Maximoff or the Scarlet Witch has to augment reality and it kind of messes her up a bit. Which then goes into the House of M storyline and we got two of those. We have House of M Civil War, which I guess is like the connecting volume, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm bad at this. And then just House of M. So. I might not be super clear on timelines because I suck at timelines. This is why I had to stop watching The Flash because I get real confused. But there's that. Then we have Marvel Secret Invasion. Blah, blah, which I can't say. I don't even know. in final view. Then we have Marvel Secret Invasion, which is by Brian Bendis and Lorian. I think. Lionel. No. Then we have Marvel Secret Invasion, which is by um, Brian Bendis and Lionel Yu. Um, this storyline follows something similar to the Captain Marvel movie, where it follows the Skrull invasion. Skrull are a species of alien that can pretty much morph to look like anybody. And so um, everyone's sort of questioning themselves. They don't really know what they are. Are they Skrull? Are they an adventure? Um, and it just leads to a lot of confusion and chaos. And then I got three volumes of my favorite Avengers comics and these are Scarlet Witch comics. Um, they are by Robinson, Del Rey, Rudy, Dylan, Visions, and Polito. So we have Scarlet Witch, um, which is Road, Scarlet Witch, Worlds of Witchcraft, and Scarlet Witch, The Final Hex. And these are just awesome. They're so pretty. How pretty they are. So yeah, if you don't know much about Scarlet Witch or Wanda Maximoff, she has abilities that revolve around reality, augmentation, um, different mind power, she can make you see things, she can, um, she has telekinesis, all the cool stuff. Also, I don't think I mentioned this, but a lot of these um, graphic novels and comics are from secondhand bookstores, so we don't always have them, you know, in the correct order. We don't always, you know, get all of them at once. We just kind of get a couple at a time. Now back into it. Then we got Marvel 1602 by Neil Gaiman, and this is basically like, what if the Avengers existed in the Elizabethan period? How would that affect them? How would they affect their surroundings? Um, and we also got 
1602 War Zones, the witch hunt with um, Witch Hunter Angela, who I, I guess is someone who's hunting, probably hunting the Avengers, or she's one of them. I don't know. I believe this is like a separate thing. Next we have one that's slightly out of order and it is a Captain Marvel volume um, of Secret Invasion. Um, if you didn't know, Captain Marvel used to be a dude, so there's that. Next we have American Gods Volume 2. Um, I got Volume 1 around like Christmas. I think I may have gotten it for Christmas. Um, so this is Volume 2. The art style is so gorgeous. I honestly, I love it. It has like this sort of watercolor situation going on. It's just so pretty. I still haven't read the first one so I'm kind of eager to see how these compare to the book now that I've finished the book. If you are not familiar with American Gods, essentially it's the old gods battling new gods and gods are things that we worship. So the old gods are like, you know, Odin or um, Easter, things like that. Whereas the new gods are technology, media, that kind of thing. And then, of course, this is by Neil Gaiman, P. Craig Russell, and Scott Hampton. And then we have another Neil Gaiman, which is Mr. Hero, the Pneumatic Man. This is a collection of comics about a being that was created and sent to Earth to be basically like a sleeper agent. Um, and he's meant to take over the world when he's... I guess ready to take over the world. But he looks super weird and he's got a weird mustache situation so I don't need to see much past Neil Gaiman to buy it as you'll probably have learned by now. It also seems to have sort of a steampunk vibe about it which I've I've found interesting for a while but I haven't really gotten much into. My camera died so if the angle's off that is why. Next we have The Wicked and the Divine by Gillen McKelvey Wilson and Cowles. Yes. Um, I've heard people talking about this for like a year or two maybe now I think. I'm not really sure. Um, but basically like every 90 years I think it's like 12. Yes. 12 gods come to earth and they only have like a limited amount of time to be here before they die. It's two years. So basically they get to come and be here and be what they are and bask in the glory of all of that and then within two years they die. So, some of the characters look really cool just like flipping through, and I don't know what they do. I don't know what kind of, oh gosh, that's, that's gory. Um, yeah, don't know what to expect, but it's going to be cool. I've heard a lot of good stuff about it, but I don't remember any of it, so. Then I bought the next three, um, volumes of Saga, so I bought four, five, and six. Yes, about four, five, and six. Um, Saga is a, basically a space opera. There are these two individuals from two different sides of like a war and they end up falling in love and the entire story so far from what I've seen has been told by from their like child's perspective they've been telling the story um and it's really cool there's a lot of really cool creatures it's funny there's a lot of stuff very mature content up in this stuff there's there's a large giant's balls and there is a lot of doing it up in here so also there's this cat it's called a lie cat so if someone lies the cat says lie or something like that and it's I would die for lie cat seriously I would lie then we have V.E. Schwab the steel prince right yes Yes, I got the Barnes and Noble edition, and then there's you know a lot of the cool cover art inside, which is exciting. The Steel Prince is actually the king in the Darker Shade of Magic books. Um, Kel and Rai's father. Um, he's kind of badass. <laughs> he's like super cool with like metal. I want to say metal bending, but that's Avatar. But yeah, anyway, um, there was this really cool point in one of the books where like he had like I think it was like his crown, and he like turned it into a sword. It was like whoosh. Maxim Maresh is his name. Maxim Resch. So the artist is Andrea Olimpieri. The colorist is Enrica Erin Angiolini. Color assists are Viviana Spinelli. Um, Flats Chapter 4 is Cassandra Pirano. And then the letters are Rob Steen. So it's got all the stuff in there. I didn't go through that much detail in the others, but then we have Stardust, which actually managed to steal the top spot from my favorite book for a little bit. Stardust is a really, really cool book. Um, there's this town, and this, like, fairy market comes to the town every now and then. Um, the main character ends up trying to, like, go into the fairy town, and then he follows a falling star, which kind of gives me Howl's Moving Castle vibes. But it's a really cool and pretty short fantasy, um, so I'm kind of psyched to read the graphic novel about it. I saw another copy of this at a at the used bookstore where I got this one actually and I feel like it had a different cover so maybe 
I'll end up going back and getting that one because I have no self-control. It's, it's just like a book. It's not like paneled, but it's just like an illustrated version of it. But I am anticipating falling in love with this all over again, reading it in a new format. Then we also have Trollbridge by Neil Gaiman and Colleen Doran. So there's this kid named Jack, and he used to be haunted by all these different monsters and stuff growing up. And apparently one of them follows him into manhood. And this is actually sounds very familiar to a Neil Gaiman story that was in Smoke and Mirrors. Hmm. It's the same story. So I've already read this in book, in like, short story form. Well, I feel silly. Then we have the graphic novel version of Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Um, this is adapted by Daniel Abraham and art was by Tommy Patterson. So if you don't know about Game of Thrones, I don't know where you've been, but Game of Thrones is an epic fantasy series where there's a lot of different people with a lot of different claims to the throne fighting over the Iron Throne. Um, there's lies, there's deceit, there's boobs, there's dragons, there's kind of magic. The only thing I don't like about Game of Thrones is that I wish there was more actual magic to it. Because um, I really want magic in my fantasy books. That said, I haven't actually read the whole series. I've only read like part of the first book. Kind of got bored. So I'm probably going to go back to it at some point. But I might just read this instead. I like pictures. Then we have Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. This is actually Alan Moore's debut. Uh, a lot of people know him from Watchmen. He is the creator of Watchmen, which is an amazing graphic novel. Oh, it's so good. I love it so much. There's so much just in it. Anyway, but this was his debut. It's actually like a revitalized version of a like classic horror graphic novel. Um, so this is not originally his creation, but this is his um, debut Book. So this is his version of it. Um, but the Swamp Thing is as like a superhero, but he's kind of like a humanoid like plant creature. Um, I don't know much about the story past that, but I'm guessing that there's some issues with people perceiving him as a, him as a monster because of his appearance. But I see leafy booties. One thing that does bother me, which is it's just the weirdest like irritation that I have. I like when graphic novels have like that waxy feel to them and this has got like the paper feel. The only other one that I have by that is also an Alan Moore and it's V for Vendetta and for some reason that just bothers me like the paper feel versus like the waxy magazine sort of feel but we'll get over it because it seems dark and cool and kind of creepy. It's right up there with things that I love. Now for more monsters we have Freak Some More and this is based on a novel called Freak Some More by Tom Dayhaven. When I got this, I just thought it was really cool looking and I was like, I want it because it's cool looking and then when I started looking through it, I think I may have accidentally bought zombie porn. So there's still basically zombie porn, but there was this nuclear blast and it caused a lot of people to be like, mutated. So they're doing whatever they can to get plastic surgeries to kind of make themselves look normal again. Whatever it takes. That's where the porn comes from, I betcha. So the inside is all like black and white, but I just really liked this kind of 80s color scheme going on. But I like monster books, so. Then we have the first volume of Umbrella Academy. Um, this is by Gerard Way, Gabriel Ba, Dave Stewart, Nate Pecos. If you don't know what the Umbrella Academy is, basically one day a bunch of women had babies at once. All the babies ended up having special abilities. This rich dude adopted all of them and trained them like little superheroes. There's a show about it now. I started watching the show. One thing I don't like is a trope that is present, and it's not really a spoiler because it's like from the very beginning you kind of see it, and it's the like adopted brother and sister liking each other kind of trope. Um, it's weird to me, and I feel like it invalidates that like brother-sister relationship when that is allowed, even if they're not blood related, and I don't like that trope, but I didn't find out about that until like after I bought it. But the comic book like club that me and my husband go to at the library on um, like once a month is reading this next month I believe so. The next book is Tales of Fear and Food from Around the World. This is Anthony Bourdain's Hungry Ghosts. Anthony Bourdain was on a show called Parts Unknown. He passed away recently. Um, he was also a writer and an artist and a, he did a lot of creative things as well as explore. He actually died by suicide which shows that you know mental illness sucks and it doesn't matter how many experiences you have, it can still be very present and prevalent in your life. Um, that said, he was an amazing creator, and he created this, which kind of goes all around the world to talk about different horror stories that are present around the world. Um, it also has five recipes of for different foods around the world, so it's very interesting. It's not like a traditional um, comic book because it's got some, it's got things like that, but it does look like a traditional comic book. It's got the panels and such. But I'm very interested in seeing how like this plays out and seeing if I actually learned something from 
you know, like the scary stories that you might hear in other places. Okay, so the next is Violent Cases, written by Neil Gaiman, illustrated by Dave McKean. Um, I believe Dave McKean is the one that also did all the covers for the Sandman comics, but it's told by a narrator who is actually drawn to look like Neil Gaiman, which I think is kind of cool. It's about this kid um, who's growing up in Portsmouth, and the narrator is unreliable throughout this, which is one of my favorite kind of things in books is an unreliable narrator um, and it kind of plays on the idea of your memory in childhood versus your memory in adulthood. Um, however, that's all I really know about the plot itself. It seems to be kind of mysterious. It's a very short graphic novel um, so it's not going to take really long to read but I do think it has like a dark Neil Gaiman vibe about it which... And then last and the very opposite of least is... Oh god, I just hurt my shoulder. The Watchmen Annotated edition Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. If you don't know about Watchmen, it's about these like superhero being people, beings, um, who basically are do superhero things. And it's at a time where um, people start questioning who is actually keeping these people in line and so there's a lot of pushback from government and also from civilians. Um, there's a dude named Mr. Manhattan who is very overpowered. Um, he can do a lot of things. I want to say it takes place in the 70s. So there's also like war things going on as well. Um, but one thing I love about The Watchmen is that there's so many little Easter eggs and that there's so many like stories within stories going on. And I, that's why I'm so excited about this version because that means I can go through and see like, was I right about this Easter egg? Let me know what you were thinking here, Alan Moore, and things like that. I'm just very, very excited to dive into it that way. And that is all for my comic book and graphic novel haul for the first half of 2019. I'm really excited about them all. I can't wait to get more of them. I have a problem. Let me know some of your favorite graphic novels. Suggest me some. And if you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight